Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Really cool video today. I have Milo Lines on the line with me from Utah, who's on a bit of his summer break right now, a beat from the heat. Hey Milo. How's it going, Brennan? A little cooler here. Okay, great. Milo usually teaches at Superstition Mountain in Arizona, and now he's out in Utah, where he also teaches and has some family. What I wanted to talk to you today about is this impact fix that Milo has for golfers that is making dramatic differences. And we saw it uh, most recently on his Instagram page. So we're gonna get into that, why it's so important to fix your impact, what you should concentrate on when you're trying to fix your impact, what you should not concentrate on when you're trying to fix your impact, and then also just how to do it. In this video as well, Milo and I are setting up this really exciting announcement First time ever, Be Better Golf and Milo Lines are coming together to do this really amazing project together that you're going to want to hear about. We'll get into that in about five minutes. But Milo, I wanted to talk about you had this golfer on your Instagram where he was severely flipped beforehand. And this is not like a beginner. This is a good golfer that was very flipped and then um, had an amazing impact. How important is it if you want to get to a level of ball control that is like, you know, at a good golfer level, how important is it to fix that scooping, flipping through impact and kind of demonstrate a flip for us? Well, it's first of all, it's really important. You know, you don't meet many what you would call really good golfers who are flipped at impact because it's hard to control a couple of different things. It's hard to control your angle of approach into the golf ball in the path. And also the face is getting pretty wobbly when it when that happens. It's pretty important. How do you define whether or not someone is flipped at impact or not? Generally, for me, it's if the club is, if I drew a continuation of the golf club and it was behind their, their lead arm. So I would want to see their, their lead arm pointing somewhere in front of the golf club at impact. We were talking about the flip release and what I consider flip release. Well, answer number one was I talked about how the club is not past my left arm. That's one of my definitions. My real definition is actually that the right wrist still has some extension at impact. So those two things relate, they go hand in hand. But for me, the right wrist has to have some extension so that the left arm won't bisect. If the right arm, if the right wrist has already reached neutral, or is past neutral, the club will have passed the left arm, okay? But there's there's lots of ways to, to get there and there's lots of ways to trick it. So for me, you know, some people try to push their arms forward to get it and to me that's not a, the optimal way to do it. So why is it so bad? Because some people will say to me like, all right, if, I, if it's that important, instead of hitting a nine iron, I'll hit a seven iron and that way I'll get less loft and I can just have my normal I can swing my swing, as uh, Arnold Palmer would say. But why is it so important to get your forearm pointed past the, uh, the shaft of the club? It, it makes the, the club more stable, and it means that you're continuing to accelerate the golf club into the ball, where once the club begins to pass your hands, the club is now decelerating. It's, it reached its maximum acceleration when that lined up. And so once it's passing, it's kind of decelerating, and it's freewheeling. It's on its own. So it's no longer being what we coined towed. It's kind of like the skier who's past the boat. Now that skier is going to sink. So, or it's going to get jerked off when the, when the boat catches up, it's going to jerk the rope out of the skier's hands. So it's just not as nearly as stable. So you're not really controlling For where sure. the ball's going. Exactly. Yeah. The, the club's kind of out of your control at that point. The other thing is, Anytime the club is passing your hands too soon, it's shifting the path too far to the left. So generally when you see that, people struggle with a pull or slices. Because when this unwinds too soon, it's approaching the, the ball from the outside, or it tends to be that way. So you can also you can hit a myriad of other bad shots. Right. A world of hurt. Then the next question you asked me was, if I've ever seen anybody who has a, a good pivot, who, or whose pelvis works correctly, who has no toe or no lag tension at impact? And the answer to that question, you no, know, my brain fog said it's rare. It's actually not rare. There's really two factors that dictate whether or not you will have 
is proper impact dynamic. The first one is how your pelvis pivots and how your pelvis moves, how your body pivots. The second one is arm structure. So I've seen people who have awesome pivots, but whose trail arm falls behind, doesn't function correctly. So if your trail arm is falling back as you're changing directions, you will arrive at impact. Even if you have a perfect pivot, you'll arrive with the flip. So it's really important that we match those two things up. We've got to have a good pivot and we've got to make sure our arm structure moves with our pivot. If your arm structure doesn't move with your pivot, if it falls behind, if your pivot works correctly and your arms stay back, you'll flip. So those are the two answers there. So, okay, I don't think from the comment section anyway, I don't think Be Better Golfers need that much more uh, convincing that uh, fixing a flip would be an important and good thing to do. So let's talk about specifics. Let's get into an anecdote here. Milo put up, if you guys follow BB underscore golf show on Instagram, important to do, but also follow Milo, Milo Lines Golf on Instagram. He had a recent post on there where he had this golfer, and this was not a beginner golfer. This was like a, a good young golfer who uh, had a very severe flip at impact, which Milo will d demonstrate. And then he had this crazy before and after. So Milo, tell us about, usually when I see a before and after, it's, it's a lot of times smoke and mirrors, because I've actually gone to visit coaches that have had insane before and afters. And then when I tried to get them to rec replicate that before and after to me, with me, I've seen that uh, they actually wanted me to swing about like 25% or something. So if you're looking for a good before and after, you always want to check for a uh, motion blur. If there's actually motion blur on that second one, that's kind of the, the thing that I've found out. So um, for you, so tell us this anecdote about, about this awesome before and after you had that was not just smoke and mirrors. It was, it was actually something that could be taken to the course. The young man showed up and he had a tendency to fire his pelvis this way and let his chest kind of stay behind. His ball position was really far back. And so part of the, the chest staying back in the flip was an attempt to get the ball elevated because he played it kind of inside his right heel with everything. So the video that you saw on my Instagram was him hitting a seven iron and he was hitting it about 145 yards full at the beginning of the lesson. And he looked something like this, where his chest is pointed back there. His hips are kind of turned, but they're slid out from under him. And it's a little bit flipped like that. So that was 145 wow. yards with 100% effort, let's say. Yeah, that was max effort. About 145 yards was all he could get out of it. Okay. And then we went through a process. This, this lesson wasn't just one hour. This lesson was four hours. And by the end of the day, he was hitting that same seven iron with about three quarters effort was all he could. He couldn't hit it f at full speed and get it right. But at three quarter effort, he could hit it at about 150 yards and it was perfect. Yeah. And then what was his spread tighter as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. His ball flight started to be the same shot every time and the same window, it came out about the same height over and over again. And it was way easy for him to hit it a lot farther. So I know you talked about the, the big differences for him was uh was a ball position change a grip change so go through what the ball position change was and the grip change was but also like i think the main thing we talked about in the videos that we've done in arizona and stuff is the way someone's pelvis works has a real direct important correlation to whether or not they're going to flip it for sure so first thing we did with this young man is we moved the ball up in front of the center of his stance it looked like he was trying to hit a knockdown sandwich, but then he was trying to hit a seven iron in the air. So we moved it more forward, which allowed him to be able to stay more level with his body and not have to go this way so much to get the ball elevated. And then we got his, his right palm on, so his hand, where his palm is basically facing the target, matching the face. That way his wrist could, could function correctly. And if your wrist hinges, you can take some loft off the golf club. If your wrist is more under the golf club, you have to use your wrist like a hammer and you're limited in, in how much motion you have. Okay. So you don't have, you have very much more limited ability to hinge this way than you do this way. But, all right, not to get stuck on the grip, but I think a lot of people sometimes when they're trying not to flip, they go even stronger with that bottom hand, thinking that they'll be stronger to hold it off. Why does that not work? <laughs> 
they might be stronger to hold it off, but they're gonna, their body's gonna compensate. So if I get this hand more under like this, now that face is gonna go back looking really shut. And when I bring it down, my body's gonna have to go this way to hold the face off. If my body turns correctly, now the face is gonna be so shut, I'm just gonna hit low snap hooks. Yeah, left going left. Okay, so those are kind of the, the, the before the even club moves back things. Tell us about yeah, the, yeah. the connection between how the, the pelvis works and whether or not you're gonna flip it. Okay, so if a player has basically built their swing correctly going back, and then their pelvis moves in this manner, the club doesn't move to the ball. So you can see that I'm, the club's not actually gonna ever get there unless I do something with my hands to make it arrive. Where if a player's pivot is working correctly, when they get up here and they've got the same structure, now if my pelvis starts to come around and around and around and around, you can see that's gonna drive the golf club up into the ball. Show me that down the line. So, Because the, fir the first way you do it, I don't think I'm gonna see your, your I'm never gonna see your the two pockets on your, on your pants or your belt buckle, no. you know. So if I do it the wrong, I'll do it the wrong way first. So. Right. Now the, club's, the club doesn't move down nearly enough, so I have to give it some hands and arms. And then the correct way would be. And I can see the two look pockets. Different? Oh yeah. Okay guys, so now we're gonna get into how, that's kind of the mechanics of what you should be doing and then the thing in golf instruction i've always seen like there's about this many golf teachers that tell you what you, what you should be doing and then this many golf teachers that can tell you like how you should be doing it like how and then this many golf teachers that can tell you like how you specifically can do it so we're going to get in all the way down to how you specifically can do it and i wanted to make this big announcement now before we get deeper into the video, we're gonna get into some drills about how exactly you can do that and improve and stop flipping it and start controlling your golf ball. But Milo and I have this really big, exciting announcement about the first ever Be Better Golf School with Milo Lines. It's gonna be in Williamsburg, Virginia on August 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday at Williamsburg National Golf Club. We're gonna have only about maybe 11 or 12 golfers and we are going to be spending three days just getting you a lot better specifically for what you need to do. So it's going to be lots of time on the range, on the course, short game, full swing, the whole thing. We have enough time to really get into details about what you need to do. So Milo, what's your, what's your strategy coming up for the golf school? I know you do a lot of, we just talked about a lesson that you did with that was a half day lesson. Uh, and you do a lot of full day lessons and, and, and a lot of times people have flown in from all over the world to work on issues with you for, for multiple days. When it's in more of a group setting like this, what, what are you looking forward to doing or what's kind of the strategy for getting be better golfers better at the golf school? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get to know the, the golfers that come out and get to know kind of what their tendencies are. We'll put them all on film. We'll create an analysis for each of them and a game plan for how we're going to attack it. And then my role is going to be to coach them through the process. So based on what the individual in front of me needs, I'll kind of have a, a series of drills for them and then I'll coach them as they do them. So they're going to have somebody to supervise as they're practicing. And my favorite part about that is generally when I give somebody a drill over an extended period of time, they figure out a really good way to screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I get to help them fix their, their, their screw-ups on how they screw up what I give them. You know, it, it almost always ends up like the game telephone. I, I give somebody a lesson, a week later I ask them what I worked with them on and it's a jumbled mess. It's not always exactly what I gave them. So it's nice to be able to have more of an extended point period of time so that they can screw up and find it and screw up and find it and really start to kind of narrow down what they're really trying to do. Yeah, because if you think of the life of most golfers, you know, even like really passionate, intense golfers uh, that are really into it, you know, they work really hard on it for a, for a very short amount of time. And then they have other stuff to do. And then when they come back to it again, they're like, okay, they try to pick up again where they left off. The thing that uh, actually out here in California, the thing that surfers always say is if you, if you want to get good at surfing, do uh, surfing one day 
and then surfing like two weeks later, let's say you take 10 non-consecutive days, won't be nearly as powerful as two back-to-back -back days. There's something about having that intense time where you're going back-to-back -back days in a row. Uh, and I've seen it at the golf schools that we've done because guys will, will get, get the drill and then there's kind of this, this learning thing where they immediately get better, then they get worse, and then they figure it out again, get better, and then they just start trending like this. Whereas this process that takes three days could easily be months and months of, you know, dipping. And you get you just get it a lot quicker. And the other thing that I think is exciting is that we're going to be able to, this place has 36 golf holes, really beautiful uh, facility. And we're going to be able to take, do situational stuff, get on the course, play around the golf, and get beyond... Because uh, uh, Milo, I know you're known as a technical coach, but as a player, you're you are known more as a kind of a, a athletic feel player. So, how are we going to bridge the gap? Because I know a lot of the people that come to the school are going to be very technically minded or have a certain issue that they want to get over. How are we, how are we going to get them through their issue, but then into like more? playing the game and letting it flow rather than being so like, you know, you hate to see somebody over a ball and you can just see the gears working. How are we going to get them more athletic? Well, that's always my goal. You know, if you hung out with me and watched me teach most of the time, I'm not necessarily a technical teacher. Sure. I'm, that's what I'm known for because I understand how things operate and I help people fix it. But as far as coaching my players, I try to be, less technical, more about feel, more about learning which shot to play in which scenario so that they can score better. Because that's the, that's my real goal is for people to get better at the game and have more fun playing. So, so now we're going to get into specifics about how you guys can fix your flip, get beyond this and all this other stuff. If you're interested in the golf school in Williamsburg, Virginia on the East Coast, where we're taking Milo from Arizona over to the East Coast, very limited opportunity to work with Milo on the East Coast. It's uh, go to BeBetterGolf.net. It'll be the top post there all about it. Or send an email to contactbebettergolf at gmail.com. Once this uh, video goes out, it will sell out pretty quickly. So um, get your contact info into me and I'll give you all the information about the school, pricing, what's included. It's going to be uh, golf, lunch, full thing. We're trying to make it like a pretty awesome experience for everyone. Okay, so, so Milo, so when you talk about the, the hips moving the wrong way and that causing the flip, percentage-wise, just super rough, how many people who have a flip are moving their pel pelvis incorrectly? Almost all of them. Oh, Probably, really? Yeah, I'd say almost everybody. If people are filming themselves, uh, Milo, show us kind of how they can self-diagnose whether their hips are working in the right way. So if your hips are working correctly they never get outside of your ankles. So if your hips are moving outside of your ankles and they're not actually pivoting, see how you can see the, the grip into this golf club, when I do it correctly, it, it goes around. If I do it incorrectly, it's not, can you, can you see that, Brendan? So correct, the grip end goes around, incorrect, the grip end goes up and down. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, like people will, they'll they'll rotate or feel like they're rotating. This is, this is something that I, that I did, but the rotation it would come after a big slide. So the coach will, the coach will say like, "Oh, you got to rotate more." And and you're thinking to yourself as a golfer, like, "I literally could not rotate anymore." It comes at the right time and in the right way. A lot of people feel like they're rotating by pushing with their legs, so you feel like you're rotating, but in reality, all that's doing is jumping you forward and sliding you. So what's really happening is the middle of your body is pulling your, your left hip socket around. Your leg doesn't straighten out because you're pushing with it. Well, it does, but it, that happens later. It, it, the leg begins to straighten out because the hip's going around. Okay, I really like that. So if you guys, this is something, because I like to have takeaways that people can do themselves. So if you guys are filming yourself face on, just check that in your golf swing that your hips are staying inside your ankles. Give us something down the line that people can see, can, can be able to see to see that their hips are moving the right way. Is it because I don't think well, everybody can even get like two pockets at impact. You know, that's that's no, not everybody. You don't need to get two pockets at impact. You know, as players age, they're not going to move as well. They're not going to have nearly as much 
flexibility in their spine. Um, but they're going to, ideally I'd like to see from about this point in the golf swing into the impact position, that's being powered because their body's turning. And so a really good drill for people to do would be, I like to put sticks through belt loops. So it basically gives them the perspective. You can actually see, you have some feedback. Is that going around? Or is that just going, teetering up and down? Because if it's going around, we're going to be, the right things are happening. If it's going up and down, then you're not really pivoting. You're just more teetering. Okay. So I know uh, I'm part of Milo's website, which is amazing. It's, it's called MiloLinesGolf.com. And on there, the thing that I like the most about it is it's got this Coach Now community where Milo and Henry and some of his team communicate with all the different golfers that have become members. And uh, quite a few Be Better golfers have jumped on that. And the other day, you, we were, uh, uh, one of the, a few of the members were, were talking about this. I know you've told me that this is like the number one drill that you want people to do. So we captured it. So we're going to show that video now. Fine. So I'm not adding a lot of hands into it yet. So it's just turn, hinge, turn, hip. I haven't really applied any wrist. wrist. I'm not trying to hit it very far yet. Okay. So basically that drill is taking the golf club, swinging it back, you know, fairly, I do it with almost a full swing, but to start with, I like people to swing it back to about left arm parallel. And then from this point in the swing, I want you to make the club head move all the way to the ball without ever actually using your hands or your arms. So you're just taking the structure and you're turning it around, hitting the golf ball and stopping. Something like that. Real slow at first. At first, yeah, at first I'll have people clip the ball. I'll just put it on a little low tee and I'll have people learn how to make the pattern and hit the ball five, ten yards. And then we'll gradually ladder it out to where they're you know, I can hit a ball without ever letting the club flip or let it pass me. I can hit a seven iron like 170 yards. Okay, show us down the line like how, how the drill goes. So it looks like that. So I'm stopping about here at first, and then as I add speed to it, which, you know, that comes a little later, but it'll be really hard to stop it. But the key is, if you're not applying force and if this is not getting past you, you can stop it. If the club head starts to pass you, you can't stop it. It's too heavy. It's going too fast. Yeah, I saw that the other day in the video you saw in San Diego with Ed Lasseter, where I was like, I literally can't stop it. And eventually I figured out like, oh, okay, I have to go so open so early in order to have it behind. To I don't know why, maybe you can explain it better, but for some reason, if if I didn't get open early, there was no stopping that club. There was no way I could stop at nine or whatever. Well, because what's happening, if you're not open, if, you're, if your body, if the opening of your body is not what's moving the golf club, the momentum is passing you. And so that momentum is impossible to stop. Now, if you're doing it correctly, it's like a baseball player. You know, you can check your swing, but if you swing the head first, there's, you would never check your swing. You'd break your wrist. Bath's too heavy. Do that drill. I'll we'll throw a bonus for you. If you do that drill and post it to your personal Instagram and you put the hashtag and just tag Milo and I in it, Milo and Be Better Golf, Milo will make some little comment on, on your Instagram about, you know, about yes or no, if it's good or not, and maybe, maybe, maybe a few tips. If you guys are interested in Milo's website, and I'll also drop this in there because, just because I like it so much. Uh, go to MiloLinesGolf.com and you can get a discount using promo co the promo codes Be Better Yearly or Be Better Monthly. A lot of people have been enjoying that. Well, that's what I was going to ask you about. So, so when I do these really very rotational drills, like like the drill you have on Coach Now that we were talking about, a lot of times I'll leave a too much a lot or too much weight on the right side. So how do I? So do you do the drill again? but show us how to actually get our weight over to the left side correctly so that, cause I'm a lot of times I'm seeing a lot of like creases in that back toe where I've, you can tell there's still a lot of weight kind of spinning out on the right side. Okay, so I'll, I'll do it for you, but I actually don't like to see your weight necessarily moving to the left. 
you can have, if this turns far enough, this hip will come forward enough and that foot will begin to come up the right way. So, oh, the, the turning pulls it up. It's not really the, the weight shift that gets it up. It's the turning that pulls yeah. it up. Yeah, that's my preference. I don't like to see the, the weight moving over here. I want to see this. And you can see what if, I don't know if you can see my feet. When I do that, at this point in my swing, my foot's still on the ground. There's a lot of wrinkles in my, my shoe. That's not, a, that's not my full follow through. The only reason that my foot comes completely up and around is I keep turning. Now my foot comes up. So if I'm stopping the golf club over here just above waist high, I don't necessarily want my, my weight all on my front foot. Oh, uh, so your expectation shouldn't even be to have it like totally like tiger toe tap on a, on a drill that you're just going to nine. For sure, no. That would be, that would mean you were doing something that didn't look right. Milo, that was awesome. Guys, like I said, put a uh, tag Milo and I in your version of doing this drill on Instagram. I'd love to see it. So just tag BB underscore golf show, tag Milo lines underscore golf and join us. Uh, send me a, an email, contact be better golf at gmail.com. We're going to be doing a, an exclusive be better golf school three-day golf school in Williamsburg, Virginia, August 6th, 7th, and 8th, 2021. I know that in like 2039, I'm going to be getting emails about like, uh, August 6th is coming up. I want to join you. I'm like, no, I was 40 back then. I'm, I'm, I'm an old man now. Like, I, we're not doing that school right now. So uh, I got to say 2021. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting experience. Uh, definitely, I mean, the, the golf school, the Be Better golf schools that we've done have always been just the guys that come out to them. It's, it's a range. It's everyone always asks me like, uh, Milo, people worry. Sometimes they'll, they'll, I'll get golfers. Sometimes that'll say, sometimes I'll have like guys that are like want to turn professional and they'll ask like, is it good for me to come? And then I'll also have guys that are, are like, uh, struggling to break 95 or I, you know, sometimes we've had golfers in their, in their eighties that, that want to come. So what type of golfer should, would feel comfortable at this school? Do you think? You know, your, your, your average viewer is perfect. This is like the, the best scenario where you get to spend a really intensive time with a, a good coach. I think I'm pretty good. So it, it would be a lot of fun. I think that there'll be a lot of progress to be made. Yeah, Milo's going to be doing a full swing and he's going to be doing a, a driver demo. We're going to have some other special guests join us and um, some great food and, and stuff like that too. I'm gonna be doing putting and short game. I've been getting certified in short game stuff from Tim and from a putting institution thing that I'm doing for a project that's going on out here in Long Beach. So uh, it's really gonna be, I think, a great thing. So go to, just send me, uh, go to bebettergolf.net and in the top post there, you're gonna see more information about the school price, all that other stuff. Uh, lodging and how everything works for, for that if you're uh, not local, which most people won't be local. And then um, you can send me an email, contactbebettergolf at gmail.com. So let us know in the comments, guys, what you think about um, how you guys are working on getting better impact. And if over the course of the last year, if you've been working on it since, let's say, I, I've done those videos um, all about it with Birdie, if you've been working on it since then, if it's helped your game. And uh, I know it's been a huge, uh, it's been a huge change for me. And at first it was hurting my game. But once I started working on it in the right kind of way, it's actually, I'm playing like the best golf of my life in the last like two months. So it's been really good. So, uh, so join us for this golf school. Thanks for watching everybody. Go click on Milo's YouTube channel and subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. Be sure to subscribe and hit the post notifications bell if you guys can't make it to the course we're going to be doing a lot of live broadcasts from from the golf school and other live broadcasts that will never be announced they'll just kind of randomly come up so you have to have the post notifications bell clicked to know when be better golf is going live and once those live videos go are done going up they get deleted because uh, they're just um not the production level <laughs> or whatever that i usually like to have so you get to see some really cool content if you click that bell that you don't see if you don't. Thanks for watching everybody. See ya, bye. The last thing I wanted to clarify is
a lot of people say, oh, Milo, you're teaching people to hold off. And my answer to that question is, at first, yes. At first, I do want you to feel like you're not letting these angles out. And it takes a lot of your speed away for during the drill, and that's on purpose. I don't want you to hit it. I don't want you to try to throw it at it. But in the end, you'll gain speed, and you'll gain consistency. So I don't actually want these angles being held. I want these angles to be unwinding. I want them to be unwinding because of physics. So some of the dynamics of how our bodies are rotating create some different pools on the golf club and on the grip, causing the, the momentum to unload it. So in reality, I, I do want the club to release. I just want it to release more on its own power due to physics rather than you trying to make it go.